February can be a challenge when the thermometer dips below freezing. Well, it's another cold day, middle of winter. No surprise, this is Canada, and this is a super cold winter. I'm not camping right now, and the main reason is not because I don't think my camper is ready for the cold. It's that my Jeep is not ready for it. If I go out in the woods alone, and it gets down to minus 30, minus 40, then uh, chances are my Jeep will not start because I won't be able to heat the block and keep the battery charged. It just uses far too much energy for that. And since nobody's going to come out to get me, then I think I'm just going to wait till it's just a little warmer. But it doesn't mean I can't experiment in the meantime. And one thing I've been experimenting with for some time is how to heat a little camper like this. And you've probably seen in my past videos, I've tried many ways. I mean, if you've got a, uh, a plug-in, if you're at an RV place, it's great. You can use like a space heater or maybe two, and I've done that in the past and it's worked well. But unfortunately, when you're off the grid, those take far too much energy and uh, it just drains your battery. Those are like 1500 watts. You might need like, like at least 2000 watts when it's really cold out. Not practical for off the grid. So what other things have I done? I did try a Mr. Heater propane heater. You know, one of the portable ones. Not good at all for a small camper because of the amount of water and moisture it produces. Not good, you want dry heat. I do have a propane furnace and it does work. However, several reasons I don't use it when it's really cold as well. First off, it does use electricity. Uh, second is it does use a considerable amount of propane and it's noisy, I don't like it. So there's, that's why I went to the diesel alternative a few videos ago, but I just am not really happy with it. To me, it needs a lot more than was really expected. And not only that, I just don't think I'd get a good night's sleep with a diesel oh, heater. Like so diesel. I, I, I think if anybody's seen my videos in the past, they know where I'm going with this. And that is the other alternative that I've been hinting at for so long. My good old homemade wood stove. It did me well in my older trailer. Because not only did it heat, but it also baked, fried, cooked, and boiled, both inside and outdoors. But I have not used this for well over a year and I haven't really changed anything with it it's it's a little rusty uh, the only thing I did was there was a secondary burn pipe in here and I plugged that up it's not needed uh, pellets are a clean burn so uh, there was no advantage to it keep it sealed up but yeah I've got that the other reason I haven't used the wood stove in the fiberglass trailer is because I needed parts. In the original design, when I used it with Abner, I, uh, I had a roll-up titanium stove pipe, but I can't really use that in this trailer. I, I needed a real stove pipe, and uh, unfortunately, I looked all over and I couldn't get anything in Canada at all. I had to order things from the States. And finally, when they arrived, I got them, only to discover that it's actually made in Canada. I don't know. That's just the way the world operates these days. And there's one other piece of the puzzle. Although I may find an area to put the stove, I need to put the stove on something, and it has to be something that's going to protect the area around it. In my last camper, I just had it sitting on the original propane stovetop. And so I came up with a neat idea. This is an old camp stove um, that doesn't work. I got it like really cheap. 
and uh, I think I can make this into an actual heat shield. That's my plan. Let's see if I can put it all together. But I've got the parts. Now, all I have to figure out is a location. Now, I do not want to put a hole in my roof, and where the vent is, is a bad location, because it's right in the central area of where I walk. That's not good. So I've got to find another area that maybe would be suitable for a wood stove. Well, I think I've pretty well established the best place to have this stove is at the rear of the camper on the door side because it lines directly with a window that opens up and I've actually taken the screen out. It's kind of a bit of a pain to put in and put out but I guess it'll only take about 15 minutes to put it back in when I'm finished with the stove for the season. This location looks good. The stove pipe is in two foot length so Obviously, it's a little too high. That would line up, you know, too high on the window. So I'm going to have to cut off probably about a foot, which is okay because I can use it as the extension that goes through. So the next step is to cut a piece of wood that'll fit in this area. Um, it might be a bit of a challenge. It's not just a pop-in. It has to sort of be wedged in between uh, the, the sliding uh, glass and the edge. Uh, I don't think I have the, the correct tools for that, so I'll probably hack something out. Well, here it is. A piece of three-quarter inch plywood. It's got a groove right there for the glass, and it's been tapered down in the sides. Theoretically, can open that window. Oh, 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 that's cold. And which way does it go? That way. It should just fit in there. Well, this is the part I really love. When you have an idea and you make it come to life. So I've taken that original piece of plywood and on one side, I've covered it with aluminum foil, like for ducting, gives it a little bit of reflective value. And on the other side, I've painted it black for the outside. Maybe it'll get a little warmth there, whatever. But wood's a reasonably good insulator, it's at least better than glass. And uh, that should help a little bit in keeping the camper warm. Now, as far as what did I add to it? Two holes. The bottom hole is for the air inlet and I've got a flange on there. And here is the other hole, that's for the stove pipe. And in around there is fiberglass. I've made a square hole in here, stuffed it with fiberglass, cut out the hole using stove pipe, and uh, then put these pieces of scrap metal that I just had kicking around for plates. So the stove pipe does not touch the wood, it has a space around it, an insulated space, which should help. Now, will it all fit? Let's find out. Sorry, I shook you up a little bit, didn't I? It does fit. Well, now, in the meantime, while I'm not putting the uh, stove in place for a little bit of insulation, I've got little bits of pool noodle, which I can just put in there until I'm ready to use it. Well, although that fits well, it still leaves you with an issue, and that's a gap here and a gap here, which is only a single pane of glass behind it, and there's actually holes there. So what do I use? Good old pool noodle.
Now along with the pool noodles providing insulation filling in the gaps, they also help making this a double pane window because when I slid it over here I've got two panes that are now reasonably sealed providing more insulation. So, uh, and the bonus, at least when it's not frosty, I can see out the window instead of having to board everything up. I like it. So for the base and heat deflector, it's the old camp stove, which I've gutted. Took away the grill, the burners, all the piping, so it's just a space here. But the back and the sides, I put uh, a special high temperature fiberglass foil like they use in engines, and that'll help deflect the heat, keep it away from uh, the wall, and bring it forward. And those just go on with the existing little hooks, I guess you call it. With the initial stove design, I'd made detachable legs that were just inserted through holes in the corners. Now, in order to keep the stove in there and secure, what I came up with is I bought a three foot length of a quarter inch 20 threaded rod, made four seven inch pieces, and on the bottom I glued four T-nuts, threaded T-nuts. So all I have to do is thread those into the base. It's a little noisy. Just like that, and then the front posts are additionally braced by inserting them through holes in the lip. And then on goes the wood stove. And it's actually quite secure. Shouldn't have any issue with it falling over, plus it's going to have the stovepipe over it. So now I just have to line it up, which would be about there. And now it's time for a pipe dream. Installing the spark arrestor cap was a lot easier than the last trailer. Well, look at that. And Dennis is back in the house. All I need now is a little fuel and some fire. Whoa. But this is just the intro. The real challenge lies ahead. <laughs> 